the reason for my video really is about really to try to get the message out there for people to really be proactive about their health, about their medical conditions, and to ask questions and to really just not take um, whatever you're being told immediately and instead to really t try to find a doctor that's going to listen to you because this has been a very crazy experience for me. So really quick, I just want to give you a really quick background. Back in 2014, I was working in a hospital and I was taking a lot of shots because in, in, in a hospital setting, you always have to take shots for protection, you know, hepatitis and yada yada. So I was taking a lot of shots and from one day to the next, I started having crazy symptoms. Like literally I was having heart palpitations. I was short of breath. I couldn't even walk up and down the stairs. I was burning up in heat my whole body I had a lot of pain in my neck area just it wasn't like a strep throat type of pain it was more like a it was more like um just pain in my neck and uh, uh, uh very severe brain fog like I felt like oh my god I couldn't even remember what I did the, the, the night before that is how bad my brain fog was it was just terrible and um and, and I went to an urgent care clinic. They gave me an, uh, a steroid shot and they sent me home. Two, three days later, I'm still having the symptoms. It didn't help at all. So I went to the doc, to the hospital emergency. I went to the emergency room and they did blood work and they literally said they found nothing wrong with me. But I continued to have these crazy symptoms. Like I felt jittery. I was shaking a lot. I was just going crazy. And um, I went back to the, the hospital where I work in and I told them, I said, you know, I'm thinking that perhaps these, this, these shots may have caused something. And they sent me to their doctor, who was an internal medicine doctor. He did a whole mess of blood work and he said that I had really high levels of uh, my hyperthyroidism. And uh, he said, you are so bad right now, you need to be, you need to see an endocrinologist like today. So he said, you either get to see an endocrinologist today or I'm going to have to admit you into the hospital ASAP. To see the doctor, the endocrinologist. Um, he put me on medication that day. I, immediately after taking the Synthroid, I think at the time is 125, immediately taking that Synthroid, I, the, the symptoms diminished drastically. They didn't completely go away, but they did diminish a lot. And then so after that, I started seeing the doctor like every three months, getting blood work every three months, and, and he would check my levels and this and that. So six months in, he did some blood work. He was checking diabetes. He was checking this different, all this different stuff. Um, I would literally wait in his office for like literally three to four hours. And then I would see him maybe five minutes, maybe tops ten minutes. Um, it's just really in and out really quick. Um, but at one a time, six months into it, you know, after my blood work, he said, oh, you know, you tested positive for Hashimoto's. And I was like, Hashimoto's, what is that? Like, I had never heard of Hashimoto's. So suffice it to say that I went out and I researched as much as I could about Hashimoto's. I I bought books about Hashimoto's. I read all all I could about it, and I looked into videos and everything about Hashimoto's diets and gluten free diets. And I started to, you know, uh, accumulate a whole slew of of minerals, supplements, vitamins, things like iodine, iodine that you put in your skin, iodine liquid with magnesium spray. I started taking selenium, turmeric, just a whole different potassium for the fatigue, magnesium citrate, so that the, magnesium, the potassium can be uh, absorbed into my bloodstream. Just a whole mess of things. And I, try, I, I really try to treat it in a very holistic way because I was like, these symptoms were just crazy. And even though the, the symptoms had diminished a lot with the medication, I still started having... I still would have those highs and lows, you know, like peaks and lows. And and I would tell the doctor, you know, like sometimes I would, I would even on the medication, I was just crazy and jittery and, uh, and my heart palpitations, I'd be burning up. 
it's just crazy. And I would tell the doctor, and he was sort of dismissive about it. He'd be like, or, you know, and I would tell him, you know, like, I just can't lose weight. And I'm really not eating as much as I, I used to. I used to be able to eat everything and, and not get any weight. And all of a sudden now it was like my metabolism just came to a screeching halt. And, um, and so the doctor would be like, okay, I'll send you to the nutritionist, whatever, five, 10 minutes, he'd see me and sit, write me a prescription for whatever I was complaining about. But I always told him, I, I, just, I just don't think I'm on the right medication. Maybe you can put me on armor. He's like, no, no, you don't need an armor. When I told him about the iodine, he laughed and he said, oh, you just stop listening to those, those, uh, things, you know, people are just, you know, crazy out there. You shouldn't be, uh, doing that stuff. So he's very, to me, very dismissive about everything. Um, so anyway, um, recently my husband started having some problems with his thyroid and he needed to see an endocrinologist. And I was really reluctant to send him to my endocrinologist because I was not really pleased with him. So I started looking around and I found another different endocrinologist and I really liked the way they treated my husband. And so I went ahead and made up an appointment with that other endocrinologist for myself. The reason for this video is I just wanted to tell you some of the results that I got. So I guess uh, there's two that are just unbelievable to me. I, I don't even know how to wrap my brain around this because I just don't. I really don't. The other blood test I took was the hormonal testing. And the results that I got on that, um, well, the way it's listed is follicular phase is like the perimenopause, and then there's the mid-cycle peak or the luteal phase, which is the menopause, and then there's the postmenopausal phase. So apparently, I'm on the postmenopausal phase. Like, I don't even know what to think of that. When, when the doctor told me that, when the nurse practitioner and the doctor told me that, I was like, what? Like, what do you mean I'm in the postmenopausal phase? I mean, like, I'm not even 50 yet. And I, I don't know if to be happy or sad about that because part of me wants to be very happy about it because I've always dreaded the idea of going into menopause, you know, because I heard so much scary stuff about it. So to think that perhaps I'm in the postmenopausal phase, you know, that's good. But at the same time, it's scary because I'm thinking, well, when did I start menopause? Was it back in my 40s, in my 30s? I don't know. So I'm going to, going to have to go back to my gynecologist and get more blood testing. And I'm going to have to either ask for hormonal replacement therapy. I may or may not need it. I don't know. But I, I don't feel comfortable just taking estrogen. And that's going to be a totally different journey um, with me because I I really I, I really like what Susan Summers and I think I don't know her name I, I'm Dr. Phil's wife she's also advocates a lot about I guess it's I guess it's hormonal replacement therapy you know that's more organic and stuff so I'm gonna have to look into that but that's gonna be a different video but anyway it's still shocking to me to think that I'm in postmenopausal that's one of the things that just blew my mind because one of the things that the doctor told me was some a lot of the symptoms that I'm having were probably due to this. So that's one thing. So what's the other thing that I have to really tell you about is um, my thyroid. So my thyroid came out at 2.10 for my TSH levels. And so which means that they're still a little off. And, um, and the doctor came in and he said, well, based on your test results, you do not have Hashimoto's. And I was like, what do you mean I don't have Hashimoto's? I, I, I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's by the doctor based on blood work. And he said, well, they were probably looking at your antibodies, which is not a way that really determined that you don't, you tested negative for the gene. So you don't have Hashimoto's. And I said, but doctor, are you telling me all these symptoms were just menopause? It doesn't make sense because my thyroid is still not even where it's supposed to be. I'm still very really bad but hypothyroid. Um, and I told him and I said, you know, I have all these crazy and I, and I know for a fact that when I went with Dr. So-and-so, the first one, uh, he told me that I was hyperthyroid and then I dropped down to hypothyroid. And, and I go and I remember it because it was one day to the next and just the symptoms just came on immediately. And that's not how menopause happens or how things happen. And he said, what? And he said, you said that it happened from one day to the next. And I said, yes. And I go, and I remember it because I was burning up. I had a lot of pain. And he said, you had pain? And I said, yes. He said, okay, stop. 
So he took me to the back and he did a, a an ultrasound, a, a, a thyroid ultrasound. And he was looking at my thyroid and he said, you know, you're, you don't have any inflammation. You don't have any swollen lymph nodes. You don't have any nodules in your, in your thyroid. It looks really good. You might have a little bit of swellingness in your, maybe a little inflammation on the right side, but it's very minimal. Um, he said, I think I know what you had. And so then he tells me that based on the onset of my thyroid condition and the fact that I had pain, that most likely I have subacute thyroiditis. And he said that subacute thyroiditis is a viral infection that attacks the thyroid gland and it causes a big spike in hyperthyroidism and then later on it tapers off into, it drops into hypothyroidism. And he said that the treatment should usually be, you know, low levels of Synthroid and then eventually wean the person off of it because depending on your age, most of the time your, hypo, your, your thyroid gland will heal itself. But depending, if you're older, you might, you might always um, have to take uh, Synthroid because it might not heal properly. But he said, in your case, you should have been tapered off because most likely, um, you know, your, your thyroid seems to have, or is at least trying to heal itself. So can you believe that? So now I'm supposedly, supposedly I do not have hypo, Hashimoto's. I have subacute thyroiditis. And I don't even know how to wrap my brain around that concept because for four years I've been treating myself with medications and I've been thinking I have flare-ups and this and that and I don't even know if it was menopausal symptoms or if it was, uh, well, I guess it was in Hashimoto's. I don't know. But the fact that two different endocrinologists have told me, um, and they both, you know, one of them has, you have Hashimoto's and the other one's like, no, you don't have Hashimoto's. Um, it's just very conflicting information. So I don't know how to feel about that. I don't even know who, who's right or wrong. But suffice it to say that this doctor that, that I went to, I was with this particular doctor and the nurse practitioner for probably 30 to 40 minutes. Um, they really took their time to talk to me to get a background history of when, you know, the onset of the, of, of the, medic of the symptoms and all of that. And, 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 and so he also told me to take stop taking the Synthroid. So it's literally been a week since I've been, this, since I stopped taking the Synthroid. And so far, I've been doing good. I'm not shaking. I'm not doing any shaking. Um, I have been taking the vitamin D3 uh, that he recommended. I'm, I'm still taking my vitamin D3. I'm taking biotin. I take selenium. Not not every day, probably every two, three days. I don't want to deal with the constipation. Sorry, TMI. But um, anyway, that it, it does cause that in me. So anyway, I just want to say that I'm, I'm now going to start a new journey and in looking into, into this. I hope that I really don't have um, the Hashimoto's. Um, and hopefully my, my thyroid will will level off and, and just heal itself and, and hopefully it was just subacute thyroiditis but it really made me feel really sad because when I was doing my research I was looking into so many different things and so many people were having the same symptoms that I was having and 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 they're just going back and forth and getting all this condition all this diagnosis of Hashimoto's and maybe you don't have it so my advice to everyone out there is to try to get second opinions I know one thing, that nobody is going to take the time to treat you and know you as best as you know yourself. So if, if you learn anything from this video, uh, and I will have updates on, on, on what happens with me, but hopefully you'll know to be more proactive about your, about your health and just to go out there, ask questions and demand answers. And if you have any suggestions or comments or want to tell me about your story, then just comment below. And, and like I said, I'll, I'll, I'll come back and, and I'll give you updates of what's happening with me. So thank you. Bye-bye.